Hey guys, what's up? Mothman here. I just want to give a quick overview to some Morgan combos and confirms. This video is going to be for anyone looking to pick up the character or if you already play the character and you're just looking to improve your stuff or make it more consistent. Uh, I'm going to give some tips on how to land it and execution and stuff like that as well as giving a few different situations that you might run into. So first of all, I just want to show you the combo that I see a lot of Morgans do just as a starting point and then we're going to go from there. All right, so that's 328,000 damage, builds about 1.2 bars. So not too bad, but I think this is not optimal for a few reasons. So let's go over some of her normals first. So her standing light and crouching light are both four frame startup. Her mediums are both eight frame startup. Her standing heavy is 10 frame startup, and the crouching one is nine frames, and her launch is eight frames. Okay, and then in addition to that, standing light is a low, crouching M is a low, crouching H is a low. So what's wrong with this combo, first of all? Well, this string, standing LMH, you're doing one low and then two mids. So it's kind of minimizing your chances to open them up. Now, the other problem is that this standing heavy is four hits, and it only does about 80,000 damage on its own, which means that it's scaling your combo up front, especially if you do this string linked into itself and you're not really going to get much damage after that because your combo is so scaled. So the alternative that I like to do is standing light, crouching medium, crouching heavy. That's only three hits, and it's three lows. So you get a triple low to start your combo or your pressure mix-up, and then you're going to end up getting more damage after that because your combo isn't so scaled. And I have double input display on, by the way, in case you want to rewind or rewatch anything. Got my input display at the top and the, the game one at the bottom. So the first combo route I want to show you is her normal jump loop. So another normal that she has is this command normal forward H or 6H. And it's like a mini launcher. Um, it doesn't put them in a launch state, but it just pops them up to about normal jump height. Um, so the basic structure for this first combo is just her normal jump loop. You're going to do a ground string into 6H, and then you're going to jump. And the jumping string is just MHS. And then you're going to do another ground string into another jump loop, and then launch. So it goes like this. Yep. So that's 400k damage. We already improved by about 72,000 damage over the other one. And this even builds a little more bar. So we haven't even optimized yet, and you can see why this combo is a better route. Um, so just to go over that one more time, you're doing the triple low string into the 6H, MHS in the air, catching them with standing medium on the ground, into crouching medium, crouching H. And then you do your, your air combo, which is a MMH, shadow blade, fly, HS. So that's the normal jump loop. That's the very basic one. It's not optimal. So the more standard B&B &B that I like to go for is the Soul Fist Jump Loop. So the good thing about her Soul Fist um, is that it does a lot of damage up front and it has a lot of hits done for most of the combo. Uh, there's kind of a weird property on it, but basically what you need to know is that her Soul Fist just do a lot of hits done in her combos. Um, so that involves the same starting jump string, uh, MMH. Then you're going to do Soul Fist Fly, Air Dash Down, H, Soul Fist, Unfly. So it looks like this. That's one rep of the Soul Fist loop. And you can basically get two of them in a combo. If you start with like a Standing Light, or if you start with Shell Kick into that ground string, you can get two. Um, so just doing that again. There. So we're getting 466 now. Um, that's pretty good. One thing to know here, there's some points of failure uh, because the air soul fists actually have a height property. So it's really important to learn how to manage the height. So what do I mean by that? Air soul fists. Her air light soul fist travels slow and diagonal and it actually sinks their height down a little bit when you connect it. The M1 also travels diagonally, but it's faster, and it keeps them at about the same height when you hit it. And then her air heavy one, it goes straight, 
and it actually raises their height when it connects. All right, so L sinks them down, M keeps them about the same, and H brings them up. Um, so you can see there's like a point of failure here if you uh, use the wrong versions. Like I'm gonna do that combo, but with all heavy soul fists, so it's gonna keep them really high up, and you'll see what happens. So you see I actually crossed up there because he got high up enough that my air dash down actually brought me down over to the other side. So this is why it's important to manage the height. All you have to do is, basically I like to use heavy soul fists early so that your re-jump into the second jump loop is easy because they're nice and high up. But then after that you're going to try to do like a launch or a crouch H and a launch so they have to be a bit lower down. So you use heavy soul fists in the first jump loop and then in the second one, if they're really high up, use L, because that's going to sink them. And if they're about at the right height, you can even throw an M. So here I'm going to do the first one with double H, and then I'm going to do the second one with double L. And just watch his height, it's going to end up perfect. See that? So now we're getting a, a lot more damage, a little more meter using soul fists early, using a good ground string. Uh, this is the more optimal way to do her combos, and there's a bit more that we can add on to this. So that's the soul fist jump loop. Now in the corner, uh, you can do the same combo, but there's just a little optimization at the end. So after the two reps, you're gonna do this. So I'm doing grounded heavy soul fist, canceled into fly, air light soul fist, canceled into unfly. And the timing for this, you wanna fly and unfly right when the fireballs appear on screen. You see, if I do it too fast, there's a chance that they don't come out. So you have to wait till just when they come out, like that. So this is what it looks like in the corner with that optimization. Yeah, so that scales your combo a little harder, meaning that after the launch, you can't actually get this MMH. You have to just do H in the Shadow Blade. Um, but yeah, that's one optimization you can do in the corner. So if you do that with like a heavy, jumping heavy starter. See, 519 before the super, 600k after. So now we're getting somewhere, see, more damage. You can do like two reps of the soul fist extension after one loop. Right, so it's all about learning these different components. The next thing I wanna talk about is her shadow blades. Um, so there's three versions, light, medium, heavy. The light one is one hit, medium one is three hits, Heavy one is five hits, and you see they all bring you to a different height. Um, so what's good about these? Well, remember her standing light and crouching light are four frames, but her shadow blades are all three frames. So this can be better when you need a faster move to confirm with, or um, when you need a hitbox that is in a better spot, because even though light is pretty fast, four frames, you can see it hits all the way down here, compared to something like M Shadow Blade, that's a much bigger hitbox that rises up. So there's uh, a different path for each version of her Shadow Blade. I'm gonna show you the light one first. And by the way, uh, just a basic 50-50 with her is if you super jump to minimum air dash height and then air dash down, like that, you can press either H or S. H is gonna do an overhead, like this. S is gonna whiff if you're low enough, like that. So that's just a basic 50-50 you can do jumping H as your approach, or you can do empty jump low. So for this L Shadow Blade example, I'm just gonna use the jumping H as a starter. Um, so this is what it looks like. Something like that. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm canceling the L Shadow Blade into fly at about this height. And then after that, you do a heavy soul fist on fly. And since you're so close to the ground, you're gonna land pretty quick. And you see that early in the combo, how much hit stun he's in. So you're, you're free to act and you can re-jump like this. Level 
Yeah, so you can see mid-screen, like his height, his uh, distance and height is kind of getting away from you a little bit. So that's why you catch him with this jumping M, because it has pretty big range. Um, so that's a more reliable way, mid-screen. But in the corner, since he's not being pushed back at all, you're right here, you can actually just re-jump with the jump heavy for the first loop, and that's how you get the optimal damage like this. So you see we got 612,000 damage before the super, um, and that's actually her optimal corner combo. So we're kind of putting it all together, right? We're doing jumping heavy into light shadow blade, then we're doing an optimal uh, double soul fist loop, and then we're doing this extension, the double soul fist, into crouching heavy launch, H shadow blade, H fireball S. And that fireball extension in the air is a little tricky. You have to manage the height and the timing a little bit. But basically you want to end up uh, about the same height as them or even a bit above them. And then you delay your string enough so that uh, they're low enough for the soul fist to hit. And you kind of delay your unfly into shadow blade there so that they have time to sink down like that, you see. Uh, but at higher hit stun, of course, it's a little tight, but you can get this down with some practice. And you can see Morgan's breaking 600k solo before any bar spent, building a ton of bar. So I think that's why this stuff is worth learning. Um, so that's the Light Shadow Blade. Um, medium, it's three hits. So this is going to scale your combo a bit harder. Um, you're not going to get the same damage opportunity as L Shadow Blade. But it's still important to learn because this one is really good for confirms. And just off the bat, this isn't the actual combo route but I want to show you about how much hit stun you have to work with here. So I'm going to do medium shadow blade fly S. You can do that about four times into a double shadow blade ender into super. Looks like this. Right. That's not the optimal damage, but just to give you an idea. Now, a couple ways you can confirm off of this. Um, this is useful, like, I'm going to set him to normal jump. And if you normal jump forward and land a, a shell kick like this, um, that's a free confirm. You can get this most of the time. But it's going to be really hard if you use standing light, depending on where you are, right? Because this has a high chance to miss. Um, like that. It just kind of depends on their height. And, like, in a real match, that might be really hard to eyeball. So instead, what you can do is this M... Something like that. See, 350, and we're building a whole bar. So that's an improvement over missing a confirm. Uh, not the most damage, but still important. So I'm going to break down what I did there. Shadow Blade, Fly, HS. You can do this like three times. Right? So if you land a Shadow Blade, or sorry, a Shell Kick into Shadow Blade, you can do like one of those, and then I'm doing H, Soul Fist, Unfly, Dash Forward, HS show it one more time. One more time. So you can do stuff like that. That's another good one to learn. And this is actually important for the next one. So give that a shot. See, I'm kind of mixing and matching the paths. Um, you have a few different options, but basically it's important to learn the different components and then you can string those together as long as you have hits done to work with. Um, so some of this is kind of like improvised based on whatever stray hit you land in a match or whatever your confirm is. Uh, but if you know all the parts, you can kind of figure it out um, with some practice. Uh, so I'm just trying to show several different paths here. Um, so yeah, you can do stuff like that with the medium one. Um, that's pretty important. And then the heavy one. So they're all three frames, this one too. Um, this one takes you the highest, so you're going to fly at this peak height. And then there's a couple things you can do. So kind of like the last combo, I'm going to do H, Soul Fist, Unfly, Air Dash, HS. Right? So just one hit of the S there, usually. Um, and then after that, you can catch them with Standing M. So I'm going to do Standing M, Crouch H, into 6H. And then you can actually get a whole Soul Fist loop. It's a little tight but it's possible, 
Or you can just get a normal jump loop if that's easier for you. Right? So that, uh, yeah, that Soul Fist rep is a little tight. Um, if you want to create some more hit stun at the beginning, one optimization or adjustment you can do is just don't do that first jump H. Just go straight into Soul Fist after fly. Like that. That's going to give you a little more hit stun to work with. Um, alternatively, like I said earlier, you, if you keep that H at the beginning, just do a jump loop here into a crouch H launch. Stuff like that. So that's her Shadow Blades. Um, now, another thing I want to show is what about Astral Vision? So this is a little confusing, right? You go into Astral, you're throwing fireballs, they're hitting from both sides, you don't really know which one's hitting first all the time. So uh, this can be a little easier to drop, but here's here's one combo that I like to do that feels pretty consistent to me. Alright, so what's going on there? I'm just doing the normal Solfus loop, but at the beginning I use M version and then H version. Watch the height that he ends up at. See? Nice and high up. He's close, he's coming towards me, which makes it really easy to confirm. So I'm just doing one Soul Fist rep into one jump loop. You can do it with MHS or MMHS. So that's pretty easy. Uh, that's worth practicing. And while we're on the subject of Astral, I'm just going to show a few basic patterns. Um, so basically, you're going to throw a Soul Fist, fly, Soul Fist, unfly, right? So I'm going to do L of an H version. The good thing about this is that the L travels nice and slow along the ground, which means it's going to control a lot of space for a longer period of time. You can do the same pattern, but with M. Uh, this one's good for like full screen confirms and stuff because the M travels faster, so you can juggle them from full screen and interrupt whatever they're trying to do over there. Then for the anti-air one, you can do like H and H. Like if they're stalling up there, you see where those sulfists are hitting? If you're trying to get them up there, stalling doom or something, you can go for that. And then the place where this really opens up is when you're in the air, right? Because you can do aerial sulfist and then you can add a dash and do another one. So basically, you just mix and match uh, whatever you need based on the space that you want to control or where you think they're going to go. Uh, this is kind of learned just from real matches, but just a few quick examples, right? So you can just do like double L. Since they're diagonal, like depending on your height, you can cover like closer or farther to you. Um, you can add a dash in between, especially air dash down, if you want to advance while putting things on the screen. You can do the same thing with M. If you want them to be faster, um, you can do an H if you want to control most of multiple angles, right? Now, you're kind of stacking them on top of each other. Uh, if you want to chip, you can do L and M, because you see uh, the M is faster, so it kind of stacks on top of the L1, especially in Astral, right? You're going to put a lot of fireballs right on top of them pretty quick. And that's always the goal, right? You want to box them in. If you have Doom Missiles, it's pretty easy because they hit wherever you're not. But if you don't have Doom Missiles, you have to work a little harder to predict where they want to be, get that chip damage in, get those confirms. Um, yeah, so you basically just mix and match different versions in the air with different movement. You can add some Plink Dashing in between to make it tricky. You know, you can go forward and make them think that you're advancing and then just head right back while being covered. Things like that. Um, just mess around with it because there's a ton of possibilities and that's basically a big part of her neutral. And one last one is when you're in Astral. You can do Soul Fist Fly and then from here you can either unfly right away 
that stacks them across the ground. Or you can just tap S to do a, sh a soul uh, shell kick out of flight. So that's really good against grounded characters that probably don't want to be in the air that much or don't have air options. Or especially against things like a character that's trying to activate an install super, like Virgil with Spiral Swords or something like that. If you're an Astral and you throw these really fast, or you even stack it with an assist like that, you can start racking up the damage, you can stop them from activating. If they activate and you hit them out of the startup, they're going to waste a meter, things like that. Alright, so just a couple more things I want to cover here. One is normal jump confirms. Um, so the kind of stray hits you're going to land is like maybe a shell kick. So after shell kick, you can confirm with like stand light, or if that feels like it's going to drop, you can do um, some kind of shadow blade confirm like this. Right, so stray, sh stray shell kick, depending on where you're coming from. Maybe you're unflying with it. You're going to have to catch them with an L or an M soul uh, sh shadow blade like that or something. Right, or maybe you're throwing fireballs in neutral. Um, you're going to have to just kind of like improvise or like get a feel for these types of things. Um, but yeah, like a stray heavy sh soul fist is a good one to practice off of. Because that can be a really good way to start her in neutral, is like a normal jump height H Shadow Blade, or H uh, Sulfus, sorry. So you get the idea. And like if you hit one like this, you can like air dash down to get close, so then you just re jump and go into your Sulfus loop. If you have enough hit stun, you might even be able to squeeze a normal jump loop in there, but rule of thumb, if they're in the air, you have less hit stun to work with, so you might want to keep it short and just launch a bit earlier on those. Um, and then Shadow Blades, right? Um, you can do this like against Antier as well, but see like he's high up so I'm going to delay my string to bring him down. Then go into my Shadow Blade confirm. That's one example. And then another thing to note, especially about uh, M and H Shadow Blade, is that if you're really close to them, uh, since this travels along the horizontal axis a bit, you can actually end up on the other side. Uh, this basically only happens when you're up close. So if I'm like right here, I know it's not going to cross up, right? But if you're like right under them or right next to them, just be ready to input your flight or your uh, soul fist inputs the other way, because that's something that can happen. And after a while, this doesn't really become a problem. Uh, you can kind of like get a feel for where uh, where they are rel relative to you if you're close enough. Like if I normal jump, go in with a shadow blade like this, you know, I already knew that was going to cross up just because I was right next to him. Yep, and then another way is her air normals are really good. They all have really big uh, hitboxes. So you can do stuff like uh, jumping L to confirm. Just do an LMHS in the air like that. Then it's really easy to confirm after that. Um, you can do like a standing light and go into a soul fist rep. Like this. Or you can do another jump loop if you want. See, so again, I'm just kind of like mix and match, matching all the different parts that you can do. Just string those together. And then another thing that I want to address, getting to the end here, is super jump height. So. Really important confirm, remember how L Solfus drags them down? Let's see how much it does. See, he's in hit stun for a long time, and he falls a good amount. So what you want to do here is jumping heavy in the L Solfus, and then fly, and then you let the hit stun from L drop them down, and then you do another heavy after the air dash down, so like this. Right? Just practice that part on its own. And if you delay it enough, you can bring them all the way down, get one soul fist loop, and then launch. And that did almost 500k. You can go into super, you can go into level 3, you can go into TAC or knockdown into astral. That's really important, right? You want to be converting these super jump height confirms. And if they're in the corner, um, 
at the very peak, this might be a little hard. I got it there, but sometimes it's hard. So another path is you can do like a late unfly into Falling H. It looks like this. I'm going to hit him at the very peak of Super Jump. See that? So I'm like delaying my unfly after the second Soltis there. And that actually brings him all the way down from Super Jump height. You can build a full bar and go into the combo of your choice. So yeah, get all this stuff down. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if there's anything I missed or if there's anything you'd like to see next. Uh, any questions, I'm happy to talk down below in the comments. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you'd like some more videos like this. Um, even for another character, uh, I can try to help out with that. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a good one.